resume momentarily. Not my new sweat top. TLS NCD, pick up the count on your mark. TLS copy. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. I found this little circuit diagram which is basically the, the essence of a Tesla Nikola Tesla tuned coil this is about as ba basic as it gets the circuit diagram but what happens is what happens is the supply voltage is applied at the source transformer which you can see it says AC there which is the primary of a transformer winding and then that voltage is stepped up through the transformer which charges the little capacitor and when the capacitor is fully charged to the extent that it can bridge the spark gap a little spark jumps across the spark gap induces a voltage in the secondary of the secondary transformer, the secondary coil, and that in tune with the secondary of the first transformer sets up a resonant induction in the primary of the receiver and one end of that primary receiver is grounded to earth and the other end has like a, what can only describe as a Van de Graaff dome on the top and then through the whole tuned oscillation and the stepping up of the voltages and the, the increased pulse across the spark gap which in, increases the voltage as well you get a huge voltage on the primary of the second transformer and that's how the Tesla coil fires sparks off huge sparks like Tesla called it man-made lightning I believe but what I was thinking was What I was thinking was is that the Tesla coil, the Tesla tuned circuit, is actually being used in reverse. Now people are putting mains on the, the primary of the first transformer and inducing huge sparks across the primary or the secondary of the second transformer. And you know it's quite a phenomenon to make lightning in your garden. But I think that's a miscreative use of the circuit. I think Tesla did that as a phenomenon to impress his colleagues but I think the circuit is actually used as a way of capturing radiant energy from the atmosphere which is actually direct current from the Sun and then through his tuning circuit if it's used in reverse then you're capturing the radiant energy and then you'll be producing a main source on the primary of the first transformer so we're actually using it backwards but if we turned it around and instead of using it to produce sparks to impress the neighbours then we use it to capture radiant energy and then we'd have an excellent use an excellent free source of electricity and I think that was one of Tesla's secrets I think he was such a genius he hid it in the circuitry and we didn't understand it and it's like a hundred years later and we're just starting to get Mr. Tesla's little joke. That's, that's basically the way it works. You put a voltage across the mains there, the mains of that pr primary of the uh, transformer, and it's stepped up to the secondary of that transformer, which charges the capacitor. When the capacitor is sufficiently charged and the voltage is built up, the voltage bridges the spark gap which jumps across a little spark and uh, the collapsing spark also induces a voltage which increases the voltage which then is applied across the primary of that transformer now that whole circuit oscillating in tune with the mains induces the voltage across the primary of that transformer which is basically a big winding. The bottom of that is grounded to earth and the top of that is a receiver which is like a Van de Graaff dome which then shoots great sparks off into the atmosphere down to ground. What Tesla discovered was that when, if you build a, put an aerial up into the atmosphere like a hundred foot aerial and then you put ground, you bury the ground in the earth, the size of this aerial from the bottom where it's grounded to the top you can capture approximately 50 volts per inch of 
free radiant energy. Now what I'm suggesting is, instead of using this circuit as a great phenomenon to create lightning, we actually use this as a receiver to capture radiant energy from the atmosphere and then the circuit will work backwards because it will apply a voltage and a current through the primary of that transformer which will then be a secondary transformer we could move the capacitor over to this side so when that's fully charged the spark can jump across the spark gap which will induce voltage in the secondary of that transformer which will then create a source of power so why aren't we using it? And uh, I was surfing the internet the other day looking for... What's the name of it? Oh, there's a name for it. It's the Tesla Radiant Energy Transmitter or something like that that captures energy. And I found a paper that Mr. Tesla wrote and uh, it's on the internet. There's a PDF file and for those of you who'd like to hear what Nikola Tesla had to say firsthand about some of his own inventions and the way the world would turn out and things like that, go and read the PDF file because it's like really interesting. And there's also some advanced technology breakthroughs in there as well. So anyway, I was in the mood for making videos tonight, so that's my little video. Thanks for watching. Russell Athletic. <laughs> Ten pound from Sport World. It was a second. Beware of Sport World, they're all seconds. I made a slight mistake with my circuit, by the way. I said it was 50 volts per inch, and it's not 50 volts per inch, it's actually approximately 50 volts per foot. This is the old imperial measurement, it's approximately 3 feet to a metre, in case you didn't know. So this is basically a receiver, which is like a giant capacitor, and then you've got the windings of a coil, which is connected to the aerial the bottom of it goes into the ground and produces approximately 50 volts per foot free radiant energy and that's before you even put it through a transformer so we could be generating thousands of volts not just tens or hundreds See that? Established 1902. I think that means we're a bit behind the times, don't you? This is the old imperial measurement.